If you liked this episode, we're not in the same boat. Welcome back to Fog Entertainment. Did you like that We intro? The same boat all aboard. Same boat, and it was a sinking boat. A boat that went straight to the bottom of the ocean, if you ask me. Because when you expect Carol, Maggie, and a bunch of new characters who weren't that interesting, to be honest, carry an episode, then you're asking... For a lot. And unfortunately what we got here was basically an episode that <laughs> Angela Kang has seen director at the end or whatever. And I'm just thinking, well, that kind of makes sense to me. Because I thought there was like a lot of pushing of the uh, feminism in this episode. A lot of just digs at men. How, I mean, you, straight away, the most like antagonistic guy or person from this four group of saviors was the man. Um, he, he also kind of came across as like the whiniest in the weakest, uh, even when he was dealing with the pain of getting shot. I mean, someone said, was it Carol or one of the women says that men? Paula. Paula says that men can't deal with the same sort of pain. It's, there seems to be some sort of fucking belief that just because women have kids or something, that means they can... We went through childbirth. No, that's it, yo. It's just not true. I mean, look at Solid Snake. Guy went through torture, survived. A lot of people went through torture. Do you know what I mean? Like, look at some of the injuries people get in the armies, blowing apart and all that. I, I think to turn around and say that women, men can't take pain as well as women, that, it's, it's a dig on men. Well, it is, uh, this was just very feminist, this episode. It's like, when you're on a boat, well, when you hear the five long horns report to the, the safety deck, well, like, you know what? This is going down. See if women could really take the same punch. Couldn't they enter boxing in the men's division or... Or UFC in the men's division, and, and, and just if they don't feel the pain, if, if they can take it, then wouldn't they be world champions and all this stuff? No, it's ridiculous. Wouldn't they win is. fights? Every time a man got into a fight with a yeah, woman. Yeah, look, they... how, look how weak this made this guy. He gets shot in the arm, right? And that's him. It's like, look how many characters in this show we see get shot, and it's like a, it's like a grazing wound. Yep. But this guy's a no name saviour, so he's got to go. He's got to go. But the episode begins, all right? The guy ambushes these two, Carol shoots him, uh, but then they get took hostage by saviors. We're introduced to Paula, uh, looking, we see her looking at Primo. I thought it was a pretty good name for a saviour, but essentially, right, uh, we've got your two people, you've got Primo. We'll see how this goes. They then go into this slaughterhouse. It's like a weird building. It, it did remind me of Saw. Remind yeah, it was, it was a cool, like unique location, I think. For the episode to be to be held in, but yeah, probably the only good thing about the episode was the location. But you're introduced to Paula, who I don't think was a bad character. I don't think she was too forced. But no, I think she felt she felt she's definitely the best character of the episode. I think. But I, you know, when you hear about the saviors, right, and you see what they are like later down the line, like Negan's got like wives. You feel like that the saviors would just have like groups of men going out. Why is this group here like majority women? To me, it doesn't make much sense. Like, I mean, apart from the old one that looks like she's got lung cancer, you feel like Negan would have the other two as his wife? Yeah. Um, I don't understand why there's a group of women out they here. they were attractive enough. Like, uh, to me, it was, I think it was pretty forced just to have that guy look weak and because they're also dealing with two women of the group, it, it just felt like that's the kind of direction they wanted to go this episode. Yeah, no, it was so... You know, it was so, so they could get their wee digs in at the men and, and then obviously, I believe... Paula may have had some similar experiences as Carol did with like being abused or whatever domestically. So I, I think it was more that. But they wanted, yeah, they wanted to have women look strong and like that's why it's called the same boat, right? Molly, she was pregnant. Actually, no, I believe Michelle. Sorry, she was pregnant. Maggie's pregnant. Carol and Donny, not not Donny. Carol and Paula got battered by their husbands or bosses, whatever. We're in the same boat. That's where the title comes from. She's smoking. <coughs> you're gonna die. All right, you're gonna die. Lung cancer, brilliant. You're smoking. Oh, don't smoke because of the baby. You've got Carol hyperventilating, <laughs> grabbing her rosary beads. Fucking shite, man. That's what it is. Donnie's crying. My nerves. Maggie's like, my daddy lost his leg and he lost his nerves. All right, fucking reel it in, Maggie, man. Reel it in, buddy. Reel it in. Rick keeps radioing through. There's not really much happening with Rick. Um, hey, Rick wants to make a deal. Carol and Maggie are saying, no, accept this deal. Rick's true to his word. We, we just went and seen Rick go in and kill all these people. And, like, the saviors haven't done anything to Rick yet. Yeah. Why the fuck would Paula want to make a deal with Rick? 
I mean, at what point? How is this a fair deal? Here, you've already killed about 30 of our guys, but we'll trade you your two for, for one of our guys. It just doesn't make any sense. No, it's ridiculous, this, right? Because you've got Carol and Paula going back and forth. She's like, oh, I stopped feeling bad when I, my body count hit double digits when I killed people. Then Carol's like, oh, you're living among killers. And then Paula's like, oh, but you're, you're killers too. Carol is like the biggest killer on this show. Killing machine. But she's made it to be this, like, you know, angelic woman. Oh, wouldn't, b- bakes cookies, doesn't kill people. Hypocritical, old, dishwashing, decrepit bastard. That's what we'll go with. No, it's just, vote, uh, people like, protect, like, liking this character. Fuck off, man. Get it in the bin. Honestly, I've never seen a big, bigger pile of woke shit. And even the way they were like, oh, we only killed your group uh, of saviours because they ambushed us. Like, they're trying to make it justified. See if this was Daryl and Rick here. Do you think Paul would be buying this? Oh, I sure it was justified. It's like, they've literally just wiped out your entire outpost. Took all the guns. See, no, see, see Primo. He should be forgotten about. Yep. Definitely. I, I no. See, this was realistic, right? Carol, you would and Maggie that would have done. Aye, and Carol and Maggie would get killed as collateral damage. And you know what you would do? You would retreat. Cause see, at this point, they obviously know the see. Sa- these guys, these people are in the save. They know the number advantage. Why the fuck would they try and negotiate for Primo back if he's like one out of three hundred people? Well, I get maybe they don't want to lose a person, but they just I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, but it's but not. It's not she she didn't care about Donny. Donnie's fucking bleeding out and she's like, ah, we'll just wait half an hour. It's so hypocritical. Yeah, plus... Oh, we'll, we'll risk it all for uh, Primo, but uh, fuck Donnie. Is it because Donnie's a white man? He's not a brown well, man? apparently she was sleeping with Donnie, but she said he's, he only keeps the bed warm. But she didn't really care for him. Ah, but what, what, what's Primo do? Keep the pillow warm? Again, like, you have these women that are in the antagonist group, but the show is trying to tell you that they're actually, like, they're almost on the good side. They have morals. They're not really the enemy. They're just a little bit conflicted, you know? They're just a little... They've got a different kind of shade, but they're not, like, the bad guys. Like, who in Negan's group... What what guy is in Negan's group that isn't bad? Yeah. But it's like every woman you come across is like, oh, she's actually kind of good. She's just on the wrong side deal. It's... I don't know. It's lame. Donny gets in a fight. He basically wants to shoot Carol because Carol shot him. Seems pretty fair to me. Paula says no. Uh, they get into a bit of a scuffle. Uh, and then Paula hits Donnie with his gun. Or with her gun and he falls out. And you think maybe he's knocked out. But it turns out that's him done. Dust it. He's dead. He passes out or whatever. Blood loss. Um, Maggie and was it Michelle have a conversation. And they're saying that she was pregnant. And they talked about her boyfriend. She went out to try and find that She got a burn or something like that. So I'm assuming Negan burned her for stealing fuel. Uh, she tried to go out and find her boyfriend. Was her boyfriend a great guy? Did she want to find? No, apparently he was an asshole so who she'd only been dating. What? So even the guy that is dead and not even on camera, the guy we've never met before, even he is a bad guy, you know? It's like, fucking... <laughs> it's insane. And see, for me, though, I actually think this is a problem with giving loads of people different episodes to write. It's just so off. It's like some episodes, like, yeah, masculinity, and the next episode's just a big woke of fucking shite. There should be one main writer. Yeah, yo. We, that writes everything, wait, wait, people that help. And we've seen that with the Mayans. They were given they were given director roles to actors. And it was a mess. There's a reason, you know, there's a reason why, like, Finn's guilty. I better call Saul, right? I think it went off the rails. I didn't really appreciate it, right? But there's a reason why Finn's Gilligan was in charge of everything, Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. You know, I, I think the best TV shows do that. See this r- literally ripping up the script and letting random people... Oh, I think it's just such a mess, but... Anyway, Molly returns to the cell, gets bit by Donnie. Maggie then just batters Molly to death. It really begs the question why they've been even kept alive at this stage of the game. Like, yeah, so Molly like, what, like, these pe- you, you, you know Carol and Maggie are bad and they just let them live. It's so yeah. forced. Molly gets bit because, I don't know, she gets bit by Donnie. She walks in. Carl sets up that way for her to get bit. Then Maggie bashes her over the head with a gun. So she's dead. Uh, then Paula manages to catch them and they kind of get... They get cornered in a hallway where there's, like, walkers down the bottom of it on a pole or whatnot and... Paula then goes to confront them and something happens to Paula. They get into a little bit of a scuffle and Paula goes down. She gets shot, I believe, and Carol got grabbed by a 
Fair enough. Yo, why is Molly, Michelle, and Paula all in different locations? Like, why are they like ten minutes away from each other in a slaughterhouse? There was no like close proximity here. Yeah, sure, surely one of them should be watching the the. the it just yeah, it just makes no sense. It just gives my here. We're going to tie you up. We're only going to use a wee bit of duct tape. So if you're you know on your own and you're not tied somewhere, you could easily find a sharp object or you know a bit of roof or a bit of a wall ceiling or whatever and and cut yourself loose. But again, plot purposes. Um, Mo, uh, Michelle then gets into a bit of a fight with Maggie and there I guess it's like a knife fight or whatever Maggie kind of slices no Molly Michelle her name Michelle, yeah, Michelle slices Maggie kind of in the stomach and then I guess this pisses off Carol she just goes over and shoots on the head but Michelle hesitates it's like you're in a fight to the death here why would you give a fuck if Mag- Maggie's pregnant Hold on, plus, no. plus there's no guarantee she is by the way yeah and let's be, when you pull out the knife and you're, att- you're, you're attempting to kill if you kill her, you're, you're going to kill the baby anyway. Like, so why is that all about... Why is that... I just don't get that. See, if you're a killer and, and you're willing to kill someone, them being pregnant wouldn't really matter. It's just, you know, it's just honest. Like, oh, you know, that's really a cold thing to say. I mean, it's not really. If you're a killer and, and you're willing to kill somebody, then why would you Why would you care about a, a, a baby that's not even born yet? Yeah, it's like it's almost like Michelle is, you know, putting this unborn baby that's like two months old, prioritising it above her own life. Carol walks over, doesn't prioritise it over her own life, shoots her, they go back, Paul is injured, she then gets bit and gets it alive here. Brilliant. Carol then thinks she's the fucking rock, mimicking Paula. Made us in the kill room. Yeah, the guys come into the kill room, Carol has like spilled liquid or oil or something on it, gasoline, I don't really know what it was, but she lights it up, traps the guys in there. Just burns three or four this, guys alive. This was all guys? Yep. So these guys come in and just get a job or death, you know, outsmarted by Carol. Uh, no character development, just walked in like morons and, uh, you know, they, they got taken out by Carol. Then in the end, uh, Rick comes in with Primo and the rest of the gang and they scout the area. And the first person you see busting through with the gun is Rosita as if she's going to go and, you know, scout the area, search the area. Just a bunch of people pretending to fucking know what they're doing. Oh, of course, they got tracked. Daryl actually bent down, got on his hands and knees and started sniffing the ground like a fucking dog to, to track their footsteps. You know what I mean? Well, with a dog shite. shite. So, um, they get there. Rick says to Primo, oh, your people are dead. Like, you may as well talk. If See if Primo talks. Is he going to get to live? Yeah. What What's in it for him? No, seriously. See if Primo's... See if Primo has... Um, see if he's like what do you call it <laughs> but you know they, they, they've got to do it in a way though that makes like Rick justified in shooting them but like see if Primo see if he what do you call that word when you not when you you thing with people you cooperate if he's cooperated with Rick's group here and then they get there and Maggie and Carol have killed these part of these members of the saviours is that on Primo's fault no uh, you could under you could understand like if if the, if the saviors kill Maggie and Carol, then yeah. I totally get it. But that's not what happened. So does Primo really deserve to die here? I mean, he's not really done. He, you know, a defenseless guy, right? He literally, he's literally handcuffed. See, at this point, the episode ends, right? But I am actually just waiting for Glenn and Abraham to get their skulls crashed in. Because yeah. how, how can anyone, how can Maggie, how fucking dare Maggie sit there yeah, well, and have a beef with Negan? I get it, right? Yeah, he killed your husband. But let's not pretend Rick's group didn't have it coming. Yeah, Primo then say, he's like, who's Negan? Primo's like, I'm Negan. Rick says, sorry it came to this. Boom, pulls out the pipe and shoots him. That's it. End of the episode. No, it Maggie is. says to Glenn, I can't keep doing this anymore. Yo, it is absolutely... And Carol looks as Rick shoots. Oh, fuck, I've never killed a guy before. Ah, oh, you have, right? You've killed about 20 people, as you admit it to. Filler, fucking woke feminist agenda shite is what it is. It's like, no, Rick's group are not good anymore. No, definitely not. This is not this is no longer self-defense. This is this is like this is genocide to get a couple of supplies for the hilltop. That's what it is. Pretty much. You know, you look at look at look back at season three, right? See by that stage, humanity's too far gone as it is. But did Rick's group openly just fucking go into Woodbury, well, I mean, I know they kind of did go into Woodbury and kill a few people, but it, it was like self-defense because they were getting a few of their members back. I can let that slide, but they're just killing people here for the sake of it. Negan should have killed more than two. Oh, yeah, <laughs> should have killed them all. Yeah, no, he should have killed them all. 
I, no, I'm sorry, man, but you you cannot. How can Rick's group like, not? Why, be... What I don't get, Negan says he kills a member of your group anyway. That's what he does. He kills a, he kills a member. And then he killed Glenn because Daryl punched him. So what but about what, the, what, everyone else? Yeah, what about all the other deaths on the hands of the saviors or the uh, for, for Rick's group? Like, if anything, man, it's almost like Negan should have killed everybody that was there apart from Rick. And yeah. It's like. If you ever do anything like this again, the rest of your community will... Oh, but they, they, they couldn't do that, obviously, because... And I get it. <laughs> Would it have been better, perhaps? If there was a bunch of no-names there? Yeah. I think so. Well, and maybe a couple, like people like Glenn and Abraham. Yeah. But would that have been better? Yeah, but why... More why, realistic? Why can't you get, like, Tobin and Spencer? People like that who are fucking D-listers, but they've got a name and a bit of... You know, a bit of a stance and yeah, yeah, I get it. They were trying to the, the entire group was trying to like escape, but maybe the the characters that you wanted to not kill, you could have had maybe stay back or something before they got caught. Yeah, I I think Negan's introduction right is pretty much perfect. I, I, but I think it makes him look weak. It's like hold on, he's I remember we counted at the time. I think we got fifty two saviors. They killed like that's a fucking ridiculous amount of people. For you just to kill two? Well, it feels like they killed about 30 in that building. The, the ones that Daryl blew up must have been about 10. Y- yeah, the, 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 and, the and, and this episode there's about four. So, so we're already close to 50. Aye, so we'll, we'll, we'll probably get to 50 in the next couple of episodes. You know, it's absolutely ridiculous, but anyway, we have to rate the episode. Um, I, I thought it was... Give it a, a 3 out of 10. I'll give it a 3 out of 10, man. If you cannot see what they're trying to force in your throat, then you must be fucking blind. Anyway, till next time. Peace.